In this video, we're going to talk about physical site security, which is nothing more than saying we're going to physically secure our site, our premises, or property with physical access control measures. And the easiest way to explain this is with this diagram that I created. So if we think about our property, it's going to be composed of a parking lot. We're going to have the building where there's the outside perimeter of the building. And then within the building, we're going to have internal secure areas where our sensitive information and sensitive assets are. So with this diagram in the green, we see our parking lot perimeter area. In the yellow, we see our building access area. So getting into the building. And in the center in red, we see our internal secure area. Now, the way that this is set up is I have different types. I just selected a handful of them, different types of physical access control methodologies where we're going to compile them together and we're going to have defense in depth. Now, as we go through this, let's talk about them in regards to the perspective of the type of access control they are, whether they're preventative, detective, and so forth. And so first, let's take a look at this. So let's take a look at our parking lot perimeter security. So they're at our most portion of our physical security. Well, in this example, we have a security fence. And then in addition to that, we have a parking lot gate where somebody has to have maybe some sort of ID badge to get in. And then we have a lighted parking lot with very bright lights. And then once you get into there, let's say you're an employee, you swipe your card, you get in through the gate, you park your car by a light, and then you go into the building. And within the building, right when you get into the building, then we're going to be looking at our building access security. So gaining access to the building, to the internal portions of the building. When we enter, to greet us, we're going to have our security guards that are going to be checking our badges. And if we're a contractor, if we're a vendor, then we're going to have to sign in and they're going to check our ID. They're also going to have security cameras both outside and inside the building. So again, multiple layers of security. Let's assume that we're an employee. We show the security guard our badge. He lets us through. We go into the building. And now we want to gain access to some internal secure areas. Well, to do so, we need to have proper access controls in place. We have to be authorized to get through locked doors to get into those internal secure areas. And in addition to that, we're going to have some more security cameras. And this is a very simple example and a way to visualize physical site security um, by implementing multiple layers of physical security doing defense in depth. So we have all these different security measures and combined they're all going to be compensating security measures. So for example, if we assume, let's say at night, let's say that all the lights go out. Of course, this isn't, this is very unrealistic, but let's assume all the lights go out or all the lights in a portion of the parking lot go out because they are on a different grid than the other ones. Well, that is a security risk. Now, potentially somebody can sneak in through the security fence, maybe cut a hole and sneak in. Well, then that is gone as well. But you'll notice that when this goes out, they still have to break through the security fence. And of course, the parking lot gate really isn't going to play a role in this as well. Well, they've penetrated and they've got past our perimeter security, but then they still have to gain access to the building and they still have to deal with the security guards and the security cameras and the locked doors. So again, defense in depth and they're all compensating each other. Now let's talk about them from the perspective of the different types. So are any of these a preventative access control measure? Remember, preventative access control measure is going to prevent in action. So in this example, prevent somebody from gaining access to our internal building and our secure area. And I would say yes, I would say primarily the first one that's going to be just truly preventative are going to be our security guards because they're going to check everybody's ID. And if you don't have access, you're not going to gain access. So they're going to prevent you from doing so. The other security measures aren't entirely going to prevent it because there's ways to bypass them for the most part. And we'll talk about why these aren't really preventative and they, they kind of roll into other ones. The second one is detective. So these are going to send off alerts either during or after an attack. And we don't really have anything here and here that's going to send off an alert 
except for if the security guards have walkie-talkies or radios or some sort of communication device, and if these security cameras tie into some sort of an alarm, whether it's a silent alarm or an active alarm, then these are going to be detective. They're going to identify and send off an alert. If we just have security cameras that are on a recording feed but nobody's monitoring them, then they're not going to be detective in nature. They're just going to be more of a deterrent, and they're just going to record the action. So those are our detective controls. Let's talk about corrective controls. Is there anything in here that is going to be corrective? Potentially, in terms of let's say that we want to correct somebody erroneously getting access to an internal secure area that they shouldn't have access to. Well, again, a security guard could potentially do that. But there's nothing that's 100% purely corrective here. Now, what about a recovery? Is there anything that's going to restore functionality? No, not really. Not with physical security. A lot of that is going to go into logical control measures or logical access control measures and some other recovery methodologies as well, such as data backups and offsite, hot sites and cold sites and warm sites and so forth. Deterrent control measures. Do we have any of those? Yes, we have a lot. So deterrent control measures are fence our lighted parking lot, our parking lot gate, our security cameras, our security guard. All of those are going to be turned. Now, I did just remember the locked doors, the, or these are going to be preventative in nature, right? Because if it's a locked door, where either you have to have a physical key, or if you have a proximity card, you have to have the proper rights and authority to gain access to that area. If you don't, then that's going to prevent you. So this actually does fall into preventative with our security guards. But a majority of our physical security methodologies here, our physical access control methodologies that we're using here, they're going to be deterrent in nature. None of them are going to prevent other than security guards and locked doors, but they're going to deter people from doing something because they know that these are going to make it difficult for them to do it. And then lastly, compensating. Why, well, yes, these are all compensating security measures. One compensates the other. If one of them are bypassed or goes down, then we have the other ones available to compensate them. So that's the concept of physical site security. And we could go way beyond this. There's so many different things that we can put in place in terms of our physical site security. And you could probably think of a lot of them, but this just gives you a high level overview of things to think about when we're talking about physical site security. So if you have any questions, let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.